What's going on, world? You are now tuned in to Starstruck Media. I'm Tango Tony, back with another episode of Insight. Today, we have a very special guest, singer, songwriter, producer. Welcome to the show, Alexa Gold. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. Glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me on to your show. Most definitely. I appreciate you taking the time out to chop it up with me. Uh, so let's get right into it. You know, uh, let's start with the the beginning. Uh, how did you start making music? <sighs> wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you already coming out the box with like <laughs> 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 amazing questions. Okay. So basically, um, how I got started making music. I was always singing. I was always writing, you know, since I was young, you know, in grade school, you know, making up songs and everything. But I didn't really start taking my music career seriously until after college. So once I graduated college, then, you know, I came back home and just started performing like on an open mic scene and everything and working with different people and started branching out, you know, working with producers because before then, I wasn't really making music. I was just writing songs, um, but I really didn't have any music to write to. So I was just like kind of writing lyrics. But once I started working with producers and musicians, then I got a chance to really um, hone like my lyricism and my songwriting over the music that they were giving me. And it gave me a chance to collaborate with, you know, all kinds of people. So yeah, so my journey has been very interesting in, in that aspect. And, you know, now it's led me to producing my own album, which I'm super proud about. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, let, let's let's uh, let's focus on the album for a second. So yeah. it's called Super Looper. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. So talk to, so talk to me about uh, your your inspiration behind doing this project. Yeah, so Super Looper is like this cute name that I came up with, essentially because you know as a producer, you know so you have like sample based producers, um, and then you have producers who make their own music, and then you have producers who primarily use like sound loops that they get from you know websites um, or sound banks, things of that nature. So for me, that's how I primarily make my music is through using loops and then kind of like chopping them up and you know putting everything things together in my own way so you know kind of like I was just you know just thinking of something cute and you know like super looper and then I thought of visions of gold so it's super looper visions of gold and visions of gold is the title track and the reason why I wanted to call it that is due to the fact that like it's primarily like my vision and I never thought that I would be able to create or self-produce my own album. I never imagined doing this. I thought that someone else would, you know, produce the music and, you know, mix and master it and all those sorts of things. But, you know, I ended up getting certified in audio engineering last year. Um, I started producing really heavy. You know, I've been producing for years, but like, you know, last year, obviously 2020, everybody's like locked down. So I started producing really heavy last year. And yeah, Super Looper, you know, came to came to be. So so definitely congrats on the, uh, getting certified in the uh, auto engineering. That's major. Congrats on that. Thank uh, you. So, yeah. So so you're really like a triple threat because you you have the engineering side, also the production side as well. And then you're also a singer. So like really that triple threat makes you invaluable because like that could really get you further because like you could say start like get in the, and get in certain rooms by engineering but then they're like maybe they need beats oh shit you got beats oh shit and you sing oh. so like <laughs> you know what I mean so you're really doing it all the way around Man, it's, it's surprising to me because I, I'll give you this so I started producing in 2010 and when I started producing you know I really had I've been exposed to music for a long time, but I'm not necessarily a musician. So I didn't know, like I was working with a MIDI keyboard, I was working on Reason at the time, and you know, like hearing like all kinds of loops, drum loops, guitar loops, et cetera, and just trying to, you know, make music. And somehow somebody put it in my ear that my stuff sounded okay. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So 
so I just continued on just like you know, refining what I was doing. And then eventually I evolved to garage band. And now I work primarily um, with Logic. So I work on Logic Pro and you know, that's pretty much how I make my music now. But I didn't start producing like, really like, because a lot of people when they hear my music, they'll think maybe like, and I'm not saying this, this is other people saying this. But, you know, like, I've heard Jay Dilla, i heard, like, Madlib, i heard these people, and I'm like, it's so humbling that people not only like my music, but they think it sounds like incredible, you know, producers and musicians like that. It's, it's so humbling. So, yeah, um, but I didn't start making this music until last year. And it's been a process and it's been a good process and people have been hearing it have been asking me, you know, to for, for beats and have been wanting to collaborate. I've been engineering for, you know, um, good friends of mine. So it's just been a whirlwind of new experiences for me. You know, 2020, um, as crazy as, it, as it's been, it's kind of turned out to be like a blessing for me. Yeah, I mean, th- those are great comparisons. Like when I first heard it, you know, I was telling you off camera that like I initially uh, was reminded of like Robert Glasper, uh, definitely Jay Dilla and Madler for sure. Like just that that soulfulness and like you had a, a healing aspect to like your music. And I feel like that's just something that's really uh, needed, you know, in the industry and just really missing. It's really a void of that right now. So you definitely like are in your own lane so it's dope thank you i know you're from philly i know philly philly's known for being a a soulful city especially uh, from a music standpoint uh the roots jill scott how uh how impactful would you say that philly uh, sound has had on you i think that if you are if you're from philly and you dive into the hip hop R&B scene here, it's going to impact you in some sort of way. To me, Philly doesn't get enough credit. We we get credit for our musicians. You know, there's a lot of musicians that travel all the way, you know, all around the world that are from Philly and are, you know, I have really admired, but I don't think that we get enough credit on the larger scene for how much music culture like lives here and was, bor- was birthed here. And so, um, you know, kind of like growing up during the period where like Neo Soul was like really thriving and you had like, um, you know, the roots, Jill Scott, he had music, Soul Child, Vivian Green, you know, definitely, um, you know, several others, Jasmine Sullivan, you know, you have all of these people who are really like, that are from Philly, that have um, kind of nurtured their career here, and they've gone off into the world and they brought that sound out into the world. It definitely influences you. So I was in, like I was really in like the poetry, you know, the art scene and the music scene. You know, this is like you talk about like early two thousands or whatever, and you know, you are around like so many people with these really incredible ideas and creativity, and you know, wanting to collaborate. Everyone's just trying new things, experimenting. It was a beautiful, beautiful time, and it definitely had an impact on me and what I could do as an artist and who I could be as an artist. When I went on YouTube and looked for you, uh, you had quite a few live performances up there. <laughs> like some some of these videos were going as far back as nine years ago. Yeah. So like, so you've been doing this for a while like but how long would you say that you've been really like making music yeah um i really started like getting out there and making music since 2006 so it's been a long time so i yeah. mean a long time so far <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so you're definitely so yeah, you you a vet in the game. Yeah. Yes, yeah, man, yeah, man, and you know the good thing is I've seen so many people stop. I've seen so many people like just quit, you know, for whatever reason. They just didn't feel compelled to do it anymore. They didn't know how to reinvent themselves. They um, let outside um, or external influences kind of like stop them from pursuing what, you know, you know, what they wanted to do. And I'm really grateful that despite everything that I've gone through, because it's certainly been like a, you know, a roller coaster. I'm really glad that I continue to do it, that I'm still here, that I'm still making music, and that I evolved. Like, 
I started off as a singer songwriter, then I evolved into production, and now I have you know um, my audio engineering certification. So now I know how to mix and master my own music, and I know how to give and utilize these services for other people. And that's one of the things that I really love is the fact that it's not just for me. I can also use these services for other people as well to help the people who's um, who I really you know adore as artists and who I'm friends with. I can help support them as well. So, do you do music full time? Um, I do. Yeah, I do. People hire me to um, for beats for production, um, and they also hire me for my engineering services. And sometimes those things those things are mixed. So sometimes like I'll produce a song and I'll also mix and master it as well for somebody. So it just depends on what someone needs. Um, I don't do. I haven't done as much singing because I'm kind of like focusing a lot on my album. But I also am in a band, um, and I you know we'll do a hook occasionally. It's called. So, as far as the album, do you do you have a release date in mind, or is it still kind of up? Don't be trying to get my business like that. Like that. <laughs> the people, you know, the people want to know. People want to know. Um, I will say my tentative release date will be sometime in January 2022. I'll say that. I'm trying to hold myself to that. Please, people, hold me to that. January 2022, I'm trying to release Super du- Super Looper Visions of Gold. So. Okay. Yeah. So January next year, be on the lookout for Super Looper. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, this is, and this is like your first pretty much like cohesive project that you're giving to the world, right? Yeah, like I've, I've had so I don't put it out there often, but I did create an album in 2010. Um, I had an album called The Artist Seduction, which is my first like indie release. Um, and I also produced the album for a group that I was a part of called a part of called The Feministics. And um, that was me and two other women. And we basically wrote the lyrics. So we rapped, we um, sung on it, and we also did poetry, all three of us. And I produced the music for it. So we also have that out there as well. But this project is all me, like from vocals, writing, production, and some of the engineering. I'll probably hand off the engineering aspect to a professional studio. But yeah, I will at least produce uh, or excuse me, engineer one of the songs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you say are like some of your musical inspirations that like when you heard you like, man, like I got to try that. Good question. Um, I think of so my the foundation of what I do is is basically soul music. Um, and I grew up. I love all kinds of music, but definitely the foundation of what I do is soul. So for me, my primary inspirations are Tina Marie and Minnie Riperton. They they set the tone. They set the standard for. How I approach, you know, my music and what I want to do um, as an artist. But you know, there's definitely people over the years who have been like highly influenced by. I mean, Police is incredibly eclectic and innovative, and I love, you know, just how artistic and, and colorful she is, um, and just how bold she is as well. I take a lot from that. Um, Bjork is is another one. Um, if you you might not know her, but she's kind of like an electronic artist and she's amazing and amazing like just super eclectic and diverse and everything and even though I might not always bring that out in my like appearance um, or my music it's in the back of my mind that I can always have the freedom to to do these things and to bring it to who I am as an artist so I kind of like take these small bits of inspiration from you know all kinds of people Um, and of course you know like Stevie Wonder as well Stevie Wonder for his musicality and his melody um, and his, you know, just the way that his songwriting tends to focus on all aspects of the world. I mean, just his songwriting is so expansive and versatile. So, yeah, so there's quite a few people, um, you know, that I say that I'm inspired by overall. 
<laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's interesting that you mentioned Tina Marie because uh, actually just earlier today I was watching uh, the Rick James documentary uh, by Showtime and mm-hmm. I had no idea that Rick James wrote and produced a lot for her yeah like he was yeah. crazy talented like yeah he was yeah he was and he I know he created her first album like he I think he was kind of basically like the one that discovered her and kind of like put her out there but once she got her footing then she because she was a musician you know she was a producer she had her own record label um she released her own music I mean that woman was a a badass so it's why I take so much inspiration from her because I love seeing women at the helm of their careers and saying I don't have to it's not to say I'm not against like record labels or anything but I do think that sometimes labels can sometimes stifle you know what you need to do for yourself as an artist if you don't fit into a prescribed sort of like limited ideal of what you're supposed to be of what they think you're supposed to be so i admire her a lot for what she did for her own career and that's something that i I take to heart as well from for mine yeah i definitely agree with that point that sometimes being signed to a label can really stifle uh, your creative control which is really like what got you there in the first place uh mm-hmm. but but definitely r.i.p to rick james and tina marie legends oh, so yeah, r.i.p yeah, to them yeah, absolutely. uh so so i have a two-part question so the first one so who would you say are your top five artists of all time and then also and then who would you say are your top five producers of all time oh my god <laughs> They could be dead or dead or alive, don't matter. Okay. Hey man. Hey. Alright. You really put me on the spot with this one. You know <laughs> <laughs> So I I'll try to give as many as I can because there's so many art honestly there's so many artists that we all love. But trying to like lock it down to like top five, like damn. Um I will say Minnie Ripperton, Tina Marie, um, Stevie Wonder, I'll say Khalees, and who do I want to put with number five? Mm, I will get back to that one. I'll leave it a surprise for you. Okay, okay, okay. Um, producers. Right. P Rock, J Dilla. Mad Lib, Kanye West, and Just Blaze. Heavy hitters, okay. Yeah. Who 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 would be your dream collaboration? Like if you collaborate with anybody in this world, dead or alive, who would it be? Ooh, Ooh. okay, so as far as music, um, or I'll say like singer, songwriter, I would wanna um, perform with or collaborate with Tina Marie. That would be a dream collaboration for me. As far as production, Mad Lib. Yeah, I, I love, I, I mentioned Mad Lib because Mad Lib is, he's somebody that he'll, he'll go into a record store and I imagine him saying like, what do, what do you have in your basement? Like he'll walk yeah. up in the top, he'll walk up in the basement like locked in the back. Because the, the way, like what he's able to find as far as his sounds, like some of the samples that he's used is crazy, crazy. And I'm like, where are you finding this stuff from? You know, and not everybody, you know, there's different kinds of like loot diggers out there, you know, but definitely for him, yeah, I imagine he's he's the kind of producer where he's just like, I want everything that nobody else got. So yeah, I want to see. I, I want to ask him a few questions. I want to see how he how he works. I love his production. I love like the way he filters, you know, his sounds and everything. Um, and I love the heaviness, like the the depth in in his in like in in his his music. It's just it's just something about it that I absolutely love. Yeah, Malib's definitely a uh, hip hop legend, producer legend. Uh, I feel like I feel like he doesn't get talked about enough in the oh, history no. of hip hop. You know, no. just from his work with MF Doom to even recently with uh, Freddie Gibbs. That yeah, that yeah. that uh the album he had with Freddie Gibbs, I I think that was one of the best albums that come out in the last few years. Really? Yeah, you know. Oh, so basically, we're talking about 
And I have um, I'm the co-host of a podcast called The Beat Connection. Right. So um, you know, basically, you know, you can find us on YouTube. It's called The Beat Connection Two One Five, and we talk about like you know samples, and and we talk about the hip hop artists and producers and the the original artists that have been sampled. You know, we try to bring these original art artists out of like you know the the box or the bin, you know, the crates, and, and really put them back out into the forefront. So we talked about Palm Olive by uh, Mad Lib and, and Freddie Gibbs, and it was just like, and I never thought that I would like, you know, because I love Mad Lib kind of like on his own. I kind of like his instrumental stuff, but like hearing what he's done for other artists is really cool. And hearing like that song and that album, I was like, yo, this this song is crazy. <laughs> yeah, masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, he, yeah, yeah, I would love to work with him. So the B Connection 215. Yes. So as far as what would you say is your favorite beat or what would you say is the beat that you heard that made you want to try producing? Mm, mm. The beat that I heard that made me want to try producing. That's a really good question because I, I didn't start producing until 2010. So obviously that's like years ago. And I can't remember exactly what I heard that made me want to start producing. I think I was listening to like a lot of Bjork at the time. So that was probably really influential to me. I was also performing a great deal at the time. So I was always exposed to, you know, musicians and live music and just hearing all kinds of sounds from like R&B, hip hop, rock, you know, indie, folk, etc. So I think kind of taking all of those influences and everything that I grew up with, I think it was just, it came time. It was just time. And I was just, one day I was sitting in the studio because I had a manager at the time. And we were sitting in the studio and I was seeing, you know, like the guy, you know, engineer, you know, work and, you know, making music and everything. And one day I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to try this. Like, so I sat in the studio and it just like something came alive in me. And I was literally in the studio like eight hours a day. Like it was a work day for me. But I loved it because time just passed by so like I didn't even. It's when you get into the zone with something that you really love. You don't even think about the time. And I was like, yo, I love this. Like, I can definitely do more of this. And I just continue doing it. Okay. So so shifting gears back to, to Philly, what uh what what current artists out of Philly are you listening to right now? So out of Philly, um, I mean Jasmine Sullivan, if you want to point to someone that's like more current. Um, Because as far as I know, like the the bigger um, artists that have come out of Philly, like a Jill Scott or, you know, The Roots, um, even Music Soul Child, I don't believe they come out with albums, you know, within the last few years. So um, maybe The Roots have, but I don't think Jill or Music did. So, oh, Bilal. How can I forget Bilal? Bilal is somebody else that I absolutely love. So, you know, I I listen to them. but I do love indie artists, you know, and that's one thing I, I definitely want to put out there is that sometimes we have a tendency to kind of like focus on like, well, who left the city, you know, who's out there doing big things? And it's like, there's a lot of people doing big things in the city as well. And so I always try to like big up the people um, and support the people that I absolutely love that are living in the city, you know, doing good work and people that I just love and adore. And I just had some friends of mine, you know, release albums and, you know, do some things with their music that I'm super proud of. So there are some people that I listen to, you know, who are signed and already out there. But there's definitely, you know, quite a few people that I listen to that live here in the city and, you know, are doing some really cool things. So you mentioned you you went to college. What was the college that you attended? Yeah, I went to Immaculata. <laughs> <It's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> what was it? Say that again, though. What was I, I, I was like, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I went to Immaculata mm. University. Mm. It's in um, Pennsylvania. I believe it's in Malvern, um, but it's outside of Philadelphia, not too far from Westchester University. And when I went, it was an all-girls school. Now I believe it's co-ed. And what would you? What did you major in while you were there? Yeah, I majored in psychology. I have my degree in psychology. So you having that background in psychology, would you say having that knowledge and understanding the human brain really uh, helped you as far as a musician? Yeah, so I would say it's more so helped me in terms of maybe not necessarily like on the creative aspect, but obviously it helped me to understand, you know, who I was and who, you know, becoming more self-aware um, as I developed as an artist, which is so important because I think sometimes who we are can get lost because we're, we're trying so hard to be an artist. You know, we're so, you know, focused on trying to create this persona that we forget, like, who we are and what we want. So keeping the things that I've learned um, through my years of learning different aspects of psychology was really important. Um, And it also helped me to learn how to deal with other people because essentially whether you're dealing with artists, promoters, you know, managers, you know, club owners, you know, the re- you know, regular folk, the audience, your fans, friends, etc. You know, there's always going to be some aspect of how do you navigate these experiences. And I think like having a basis of psychology and just learning how to deal with different people um, is really integral to to navigating those experiences. So Okay. <clears throat> what uh what advice would you give to someone who's looking to be a like start singing or or maybe just start producing or really just start music period like what advice would you give to someone that's just at that starting point <sighs> wow um i would say trust yourself trust your voice trust your gift and love it with everything that you have and trust that it will take you where you need to go i think that you know as i say that i'm giving that advice but i'm also reminding myself of how important it is to trust what i would like what i was given to trust what i was given because for so long, you know, I've gone through ups and downs with my voice. Sometimes I loved it. Sometimes I hated it. Sometimes I felt like, meh. You know, there were just so many different points that I went through judging myself, you know, really being critical of myself and who I was as a singer, who I was as a performer and as an overall artist, following other people's directions and and their ideas of who they wanted me to be. And although I'm not saying that other people can't see something in you um, that can be helpful, I, I think at the end of the day, we always know ourselves best. And so it has to be a collaboration. And if someone is not respecting like who you are and what you want, then that might not be the relationship that's best for you. You really have to trust yourself. And we're living in a time now where indie artists, that's the move. You know, I, I, you know, obviously we can, there are still people wanting to get signed. And, and as I said before, I have nothing against being signed. It's a, it's a great thing. But I think we are in a space where, you know, there's so many people, you know, really working and thriving as independent artists with their own creative vision. And I think they should honor that. And I think, you know, if I was speaking to someone, I would tell them to honor their artistic vision. Trust yourself. Trust what the creator gave you. Like you trust your voice, you know, it's tone, it's timbre, it's pitch, you know, like whatever it is, trust it. You know, absolutely honor it by, you know, getting vocal lessons if you need that, or you know, getting other lessons in, in, in other ways, but cherish the gift that you have and, and trust that it will lead you to where you need to be. You know, it, it, it really will. Mm, okay, you drop. You dropping some gems there. Thank you for that. 
where, uh, where where do you see yourself in a year? I see myself with a finished album. Hey, amen. Okay. Yeah, I see myself with a video, a music video, um, and a single. So I definitely see that. And um, possibly another album in the works because I already started thinking of more music. And I also see myself um, performing and possibly being featured on, you know, different platforms like this and more, you know, just talking about the finished project that is Super Looper and being able to share that music with the world, still producing, still um, possibly engineering and producing for, you know, people that I really love and just being healthier and feeling, you know, even more fulfilled in, in my own personal life journey so tell the people why they should listen to Alexa Gold mm. if you want to see yourself reflected in music if you want to hear the story of how someone went through really crazy things to get their vision out there. If you want to see or hear someone's perspective on spirituality and life and death and love and just being who you are and being, uh, and just loving who you are, then I think this album is for you. You know, it's it's a sometimes that can be a hard question because I know not everyone is going to see themselves reflected in this. But this project comes from a woman who never saw herself self-producing her own album. And yet here I am, a singer, a songwriter, a producer, an engineer, creating my vision of what I want. You know, the first verse of Visions of Gold, the title track for the album is, the melodies that live in me were begging me to set them free and let them breathe. Can I speak to your soul? Then that's all I'm trying to do with this album. I'm just trying to speak to your soul and let you know that you are me and I am you. And I want you to hear that in this record. Yeah, honestly, in a in a way, you kind of definitely remind me of Alicia Keys from the standpoint of she produces, writes her own songs, and she's engineering too. Like, I was recently watching, I guess, her YouTube series, uh, and like she was just talking about that how like as a woman in the music space, there's really like she's really a unicorn. So like, so like seeing somebody like you who's like Alicia who's in the same industry like it's a it's a great thing to see it's refreshing wow wow I, I appreciate you saying that and i appreciate you sharing that with me um because there are women who are doing that it's a small percentage so yeah. definitely you know i get reminded of that when people are like dad you you produce you and you yeah hey, you know <laughs> but it's because it's such a small percentage of women who are doing it but we're out there there's another woman that i love um her name is georgia ann Muldrow. And she's, um, I want to say she's on the West Coast. And she's a singer, musician, you know, songwriter, producer, engineer. Dope. Like, super, super dope. And, um, you know, she creates her own projects. So we're out there. Like, definitely we're out there and we're making good music. You know, and not just, like, for women. We're making good music for everybody. So, like, trust me, when you hear this album... I, I've had so many people just tell me from the snippets I've shared on social media, like, yo, like, I can't wait for this album to come out. And I'm grateful, man. Like, thank you so much for even having me on here to even talk about it. Because this is the kind of thing, you know, that makes my heart feel like it just makes my heart just feel so good. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to you and all the women in the industry really doing their thing. Like, they don't yeah. you guys don't get enough credit. So, you know, keep keep doing your thing. I appreciate it. But uh, we're about to end it. But mm -hmm. before we do that, do you have any final remarks at all? Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you to Tango Tony. <laughs> 
Yes, thank you so much for, for having me on here, you know, once again, for sharing your platform with me and inviting me to share my story with you and your listeners. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Alexa Gold Music. You can also find my um, podcast, The Beat Connection, on YouTube uh, via The Beat Connection 215. And you can find us on YouTube at the underscore beat underscore connection 215. So that's um, at the underscore beat underscore connection 215. And Super Looper Visions of Gold tentatively will be uh, released in January 2022. I'm, I'm trying to hold myself to that but thank you so much for listening thank you so much for for tuning in and for allowing me to share my story with you and i got more music coming that's all i can say more music is on the way hey okay so links will be in the description to all our social media accounts so definitely tap in with her show some love uh super looper uh january tentatively you know what i'm saying <laughs> So be on the lookout for that as well. Um, and yeah, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to chop it up with me and share your story. Uh, and yeah, that's another episode of Insight with the lovely Alexa Gold. I'm Tango Tony, signing out. Ah. But the stars are out, he says, and laughs. How do you know the stars are?